After five months, I'm back, not only moving across the ocean, but also across continents and starting a new job. I'm finally back, settled into my new office. Please forgive the coronavirus working from home hair and facial hair, but I'm back. And what brought me back? Our good old friend, Anthony Riley, Sleeping Warrior. So if you want a little bit of science and a new experiment about cold moonlight, stick around. Anyone that's followed my channel over the past year or so knows that my channel is more about the science and experimentation, not necessarily about the point and laugh and snark at the flat earthers. But every once in a while, those two roads do cross. And this is one of those times. Anthony recently released a video claiming that he had proof through scientific experimentation that moonlight is in fact cooling rather than heating like every other form of light within the universe. But it does actually have some basis in reality. Let's take a look at the science behind it that Anthony, for some reason, can't seem to grasp. If you were to take an umbrella or some other type of covering under the moonlight and let the cooling effect take place, you will find that the temperature in the shaded area is actually warmer than the area in the direct moonlight. Without research, this may seem like an odd phenomenon, but by Peeling the onion back one single layer, you can find the reason. As the air cools at night, the ground begins to radiate heat uniformly upward. But when you add a structure above the ground, the heat radiating upwards bounces back down, creating area of warmer temperature, whereas the rest of the ground, the heat just radiates up and disperses. But let's not confuse the science with Anthony's experiment. Let's take a look at his video. Right, so as you can see, I've got a, a shoebox lid, and in the shoebox lid, I've cut out three holes to create a triangle unique shape. And the idea is to prove that the moonlight that's passing through it from behind is going to pass through there, create a, a triangle shape on the back plate, which is checker plate painted black. It's a quarter of an inch thick steel for lifting motorbikes up. It's thick, it's got a resistance against light um, and temperature. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show on here, as you can see. You can see the three light, the three thingies there. Temperature, this thing is about 7.3 degrees. Go to the checker plate, and there you see on the back plate there, you can see that that is specifically colder. So the outside of it is 8 degrees. It's been outside for about 20 minutes, half an hour. I move to this bit here. 7 degrees. Move off it. 7.6 degrees. 8.3. Looks like it's turn that light off. It's, diff it's so difficult to get in there, right? So it looks like it's about 8.4, and then compare that to there, which is also 8.4, 8.5, and you can clearly see that the shade that's being cast by the box is 9.2, and there's the triangle. So it, I'm going to confirm that moonlight is colder than than uh, shade. Are you looking at the proof? So look how, look at how I've done it. I've got a shoebox, shoebox lid with a, a spacer so that there's no way that there's any heat being exposed from the shoebox lid. Now that is a very compelling video. If you don't understand what's actually happening here, and I'll admit when I first watched the video, I was compelled as well until it was pointed out by Sean Hufford that Anthony was intentionally using the wrong kind of material for this specific experiment. What Sean was able to identify is that the material that Anthony used behind the shoebox is actually a reflective material. Even though that's an infrared camera, it is looking at a reflection of the objects that are above it. If you want a full breakdown of how this works, here's a link to Sean's video. I suggest you go check it out. It's very compelling and it's easy to grasp once you actually try to understand what's happening. But to show what I'm talking about, let's take a look again at this one little clip from Anthony's video. This heat spot, right here. That's a reflection of the house in the background. Just like before, you're not actually looking at the heat or cooling effect of light falling on that object. You're literally looking at a reflection of it 
from the backside of the shoebox. And what you're seeing on those three dots, you're seeing a reflection of the cool sky through those holes. Now, to his credit, Anthony has followed up that video and admitted that the first one was not proof. He still hasn't taken down the original one yet, though. I don't know why. So good old Anthony has motivated me to run another experiment. If moonlight is cooling, just as sunlight is heating, then concentrated moonlight will cause an excessive cooling effect, just as concentrated sunlight causes a heating effect. Here's my setup. I have an 8-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope. The SET telescope works by reflecting sunlight from the primary mirror back forwards towards the front of the telescope to a secondary mirror. The light is then reflected backwards back through the eyepiece at the rear of the scope. What I'm planning to do is to mount a sheet of cardboard parallel with the mirror plane and measure the temperature difference by the light cast through the eyepiece, the shaded light next to it, and the area directly in the moonlight adjacent that. And I will also test this with multiple eyepieces and by removing the eyepieces completely. And unlike Tony, I'll also use multiple different types of material to evaluate their individual thermal properties. The temperature will be taken through a FLIR camera adapter on my iPhone and through a laser thermometer. The next full moon is in May. Between now and then, I plan on setting up the build and running some tests. I'll post updates on the construction and I will gladly accept any guidance or criticism on how to adjust or modify this to get more accurate results. Tony, this message is directly to you. I know that you think that we still have some kind of beef over our fallout because of your involvement with FE Core and the guidance you were giving them after claiming that Sly and Sean's channels were going to go down because of whatever fraudulent copyright claims they'd had. That's your beef, not mine. I'm not going to be your friend, but I'll still talk to you. And you're the one that has me blocked. It's not the other way around. So you're more than welcome to have any input you feel that you need in this experiment. So take a look at my setup. Tell me what I've got right. Tell me what I've got wrong. Give me some advice on what you think could be done better. If I disagree, for full transparency, I'll post your messages and I'll post your guidance to show that where we disagreed and how this is run. And I might even run it the way you want to, just because. So this is your chance. Do a collaboration with a baller and prove that Moonlight is actually cooling. So pick up the torch and run to the victory line and claim that you are the one that was able to prove that Moonlight is cooling. And if that is indeed the fact, I will be there to shake your hand at the end. Well, from six feet away at least, because I'm not touching anyone right now. It's good to be back, everyone. I know it's been a long time, but I've got several videos that I'm hoping to get out over the next couple months, deeply science-based. So until then, if you want updates on this, make sure you like and subscribe down below. Click the bell if you want notifications. And follow me on Twitter, and you can see where this experiment goes. And Tony, one last time, let's do this together. If you want to prove it, then prove it. Take care.